just want to talk a little bit more about what you can do with with Syrah. Um, and I wanted to cover more of the uh, ale aleatoric samples. Um, I think it's kind of a difficult um, thing to, for me at least, to grasp with samples. Um, because uh, as far as I understand the idea of that um, aleatoric music is uh, some of the performance is left to the performer itself, uh, so the composer leaves them kind of open to do things. Um, so, to me, like when you're sampling things, that's fixed in time. So there's not, you can't really be um, truly aleatoric music, because um, that it would have to generate something completely new which you don't have a live performer in the computer. Um, I guess that's just something I thought of and you know maybe I'm completely off base on that but um, one of the things that you can do with Syrah though is kind of create a randomness and almost generate something that sounds like it's new even if it's coming from the same sample and I'll demonstrate that here but first I wanted to show you some of the samples that kind of had that um, mindset um, I didn't really think about that term or that what other sample libraries were doing. Like Spitfire, they have, I think it's Albion 4, um, and 8DO, of course, does a lot of stuff like that. Um, but, you know, regardless, I did want to have randomness in certain samples just because Syrah deals with um, the, the samples across time. Um, so you're able to get some randomness in there. Um, so I'll just go through some of the sounds that have a little bit of that idea in mind. Um, first, uh, the very felt harmonics. Now, yeah, it's the same note being played, but you can hear this uh, speeding up and slowing down. So that's the aspect that's more random. So if you Turn on. Turn on the engine, you can get more variation like that, and then changing the position of where the sample is being focused. some octave stuff kind of adds to the randomness so that's one sample that has that approach um, then these samples the mesh bass mesh harmonics they definitely change over time So you can get a little bit of variation there. Um, let's see. Now this one literally is random. Uh, I just played random harmonics. Um, well, first this one is... So kind of randomly muting and then unmuting the harmonics. Um, but this one here... Literally just playing random harmonic notes and no real rhyme or reason for which ones I'm playing. So if you turn the engine on here,
so you can get quite you know quite a lot of variation and change in the sound um, with the octaves and messing with the positioning the rate and the movement I think these are um, and also the space here and um, this really deals with how clustery the sound is so if it's lower down it's going to sound more clustered and the notes will be closer together or if it's up like this it won't be as much um, so if you don't know, randomize that or just do random stuff um, you know a funny side note is we actually had to do um, the snapshots over several times um, somebody's waking up um, had to do the snapshot several times um, and I literally felt like I was a painter so um, the name rings true I guess um, so I had to paint this stuff quite a few times um, but putting that aside let's move on um, so I think the things if you want to create more randomness in Syrah um, the things to focus on would be the octaves um, the rate and movement and also not turning this all the way to the right the length here so having it somewhere over here um, the positioning here and this uh, space um, table here and then symmetry kind of in this area the more you push it to the right the more it's going to be well symmetrical um, so it's going to be a little more random to the left so those are the things I think you know if you want randomness to focus on um, and then you know even more randomness of pitch I guess would be turning the drift up um, so just to experiment let's see how that would sound if we kind of just did we'll do that and then we'll put that to random turn the drift up halfway movement all the way up rate and rate doesn't need to be high but We'll see how much movement there is. Um, I'll say four here. So definitely good for some just random effects and kind of dreamy effects even if you know there's not much tonal center or uh, tonal reason behind it um, yeah, let's see a lot of the uh, violin samples are more um, kind of random we have This is another one where it's just kind of muted and then unmuted. So the piano was muted and unmuted, but also the speed of the samples or the speed of my playing was changed. So um, over time, so with more settings, you're going to get more randomness as well. Yeah, that's that one. Um, and then, of course, the any uh, of the samples that are have kind of a phrase going on. The octave one. So you already have octave playing octaves. Um, this is what it sounds like without the engine on. Yeah, getting pretty uh, crazy, swirling and 
dreamy effects, I guess. Um, let's see. How shifty is that? <laughs> Now this is where we get into the more random stuff here. I guess what they call aleatoric.
Um, now this one um, is a little different. Um, I recorded different trills, um, I guess what they're called. Um, a si another side note, I'm not a violin player. Um, so uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, so what I did was play different um, intervals and so they're not consistent so it adds like adds a little bit of nuance or variation if you play more than one note at the same time So if you turn that length down, so I mean it. It doesn't, you know, of course there's a lot of pitch shifting going on and stuff because of the octaves and things like that. Um, but to me it still sounds kind of spontaneously generated. Um, <clears throat> um, so I think it, you know, can add a really cool effect for coloring things. And And then, of course, we have random violin plucks, which is kind of like the random guitar harmonics from the guitar section. So yeah, it's really easy with these settings, like I said, uh, just to reiterate, uh, the octaves, rate movement, uh, space over here in the symmetry, um, and also the randomness here might help, uh, and position here. These, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, these six things here can really add to the very variation and randomness, but also the drift, of course. So that's going to be more, uh, a little more, uh, it's going to be slower, the, the randomness isn't so drastic, it's, it's not like it's randomly playing note on uh, different pitches, um, but it helps to add even more variation. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's about it as far as, I mean, in general, these sounds were not, there wasn't really, I didn't really put a big um, effort and consistency with each sample. Um, so I think in that way it adds a little bit more variation too. Um, I mean, another one is the, uh, I guess I call them moving pluckers, but basically, um, changing the position where you pluck on the guitar um, what's it called the near the bridge um, so the closer you get to the bridge I think that's what it's called where the strings come up or where you yeah so you, you get some more of a higher pitched or not pitched uh, higher frequencies the EQ is different um, and then when you get further away and you get closer to the um, 
um, where the frets are. <laughs> I can't remember my guitar terminology. Um, the closer you get to the frets, um, the sound gets a little more hollow sounding, a little more boomy, um, less high end. Um, so what I did was uh, constantly change where I was plucking um, so gradually. So. So not as uh, drastic of a variation there, but it's still, you know, it'll be subtle. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that finally is about it. Um, so if you watch this, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you'll check out the instrument if you haven't already. Um, have a good one.